Jacques Bernard X, the original Mr. Le Mans, who was so, so much more. Jackie X was born January 1st, 1945 in Brussels, and from the very beginning, he was brought up around racetracks. His father, Jacques, was a motorsport journalist and motocross competitor. Jacques introduced the sport of motocross to Belgium, all the while winning the prestigious Liège-Rome-Liège rally and starting Le Moniteur Automobile, a magazine that still runs to this very day. Jacques would take Jackie to the races he would cover, but it wasn't until Jackie received a 50cc Zundap motorbike that Jackie's interest in racing would take off. At 16, X won the Belgian 50cc motorcycle trials championship, before going on to win 8 rounds of 13 in his first European 50cc trials effort, taking with it the title. He then moved into circuit racing, tackling a Lotus Cortina to the 1965 National Saloon Car Championship. He made his Le Mans debut in 1966, driving a privateer Ford GT40, which expired just before half-race distance, before taking his first major victory. At just 21 years old, X teamed up with Hubert Hahn in a BMW 2000 Ti and won the Spa 24 hour, the year after his brother Pascal X had done. That drive earned X a seat next to Hahn in an F2 car for the 1966 German Grand Prix, held at the Nordschleife. Unfortunately, lap 1 contact saw X fail to finish after an accident with John Taylor just before Flugplatz, who later died due to his injuries sustained in the crash. X continued to race on, and good results had put him on the radar of John Wire, who recruited the Belgian for the Ford GT40 squad. X was paired with Dick Thompson, driving a derivative of the Ford GT40 called the Mirage. The Mirage proved somewhat successful, with X and Thompson taking victory at Spa-Francorchamps, while a tilt at Le Mans was less successful, with the engine giving up after just 29 laps. The breakout moment for X came not too long after. Competing in a Matra MS7 F2 car at the Nürburgring Grand Prix, X qualified third overall. However, F1 regulations dictated that X would have to start behind all of the F1 cars. Despite that, X managed to be as high as fifth within only four laps of the start until a broken front suspension saw his retirement from the race. This earned him a full F1 debut in a Cooper T81B at Monza, where he earned his first Formula 1 point, finishing sixth. He completed the F2 championship, taking the title, and earned a drive for Ferrari in the 1968 Formula 1 season. Balancing his F1 commitments alongside sports cars, X's 1968 season was defined by his incredible skill in the rain. He picked up his first Formula 1 victory at the French Grand Prix at Rouen in heavy rain, and just to prove it wasn't a fluke, he did the same at the Spa 1000 km at the seat of a GT40. In fact, X's starting lap in the Ford was so incredible that he'd built a 40 second advantage to the rest of the field on one lap. X's 68 return featured a fourth place in the F1 driver's standings and three wins on the way to helping Ford secure the World Sports Car Championship for Makes. But it was a crossroad for X. Wanting to continue his sports car career and unimpressed with Ferrari's upcoming offering, the 312P, X left the Scuderia after a single season and moved to Brabham for the 1969 F1 season, driving golf colours across both his F1 and John Wire Ford campaigns. It would prove a fruitful change, with X taking two victories on his way to a distant second place in the F1 championship. But in 1969, Jackie X took his first Le Mans victory. X was a key player in two iconic moments in that 1969 race. Firstly, the protest to the Le Mans start, and of course, the thrilling finish, where he and Hans Hermann battled towards the closest competition finish at Le Mans ever. And if you missed our feature on the 1969 race, you can check that one out a little later. The change in landscape for both sports cars and Formula 1 saw X return to Ferrari for the 1970 season, driving the 512S in endurance competition and the confusingly named 312B in Formula 1. And while the 512 was somewhat under bait compared to the terrifying 917 it was up against, X enjoyed much more success in the Formula 1 machine. The 1970 season of Formula 1 will always be remembered as the only season won posthumously, with Jochen Rindt winning 5 of the first 10 rounds before his death at Monza. With 3 rounds remaining in the championship, X was the only driver mathematically able to take the title from Rindt, requiring 3 straight wins to haul in the deceased driver. A win in Canada set the tone, 
but a flat tire at Watkins Glen relegated X to fourth, and despite a win in the final round in Mexico, X would settle for second place in the championship. X continued with the Scuderia for another three seasons, taking a World Sports Car Championship at the seat of the 312P, but never quite reaching the same level in Formula 1. He moved over to the John Player Lotus squad for Formula 1 in 1974, which became his sole focus just before another run at Le Mans with Golf in 1975. The 1975 Le Mans was an opportunity seized by John Wyatt and Golf Racing. Due to the ongoing oil crisis, the ACO imparted massive fuel usage, refueling, and capacity restrictions, aiming to cut the fuel usage by a quarter. Wire engineered a special version of the Mirage using a nine-year-old Cosworth F1 engine to create the GR8. Partnered with Derek Bell for the first time, Ix and Bell took victory, marking the second win at Le Mans for Ix and the final John Wire Automotive win. X was then invited to the Porsche factory team for 1976, taking victory at Le Mans again with Guy's Van Lennep. As the two-time defending champion, X went into the 1977 edition of Le Mans as the unbackable favourite and drove what he calls the race of his life. With the 936 he was sharing with Henri Pescarolo, failing after just four hours, X was moved over to the sister machine of Jürgen Barth and Hurley Haywood. Already 15 laps down thanks to engine issues of its own. The three of them sighed through the field, making their way back to fifth by midnight, but it was X's night stints in the rain and fog, driving essentially qualifying pace through the hours of darkness that saw the car peek into the morning sunshine in the lead of the race. X's heroics through the night had built a healthy lead that the engine did its best to nullify. With just over an hour left, one of the cylinders failed completely. Bath managed to get the car into the pits, where the mechanics disconnected the injection and ignition of the affected cylinder, and the car completed the last 10 minutes of the race on five cylinders to take an incredible victory. In an interview with DailySportsCar.com, X had this to say about that drive. I was not exhausted at the end, I was broken. Such an effort for such a long time, because I did three stints in a row, one stop, three stints again. We had no rev counter for the whole race, so all the changes were done by ear. In reality, I, I was happy that Bath finished the race for me. I was destroyed. Around this time, X received a phone call from one Alan Moffat, a Canadian touring car driver racing in Australia. The ATC season's marquee event, the Bathurst 1000, was on the horizon, and Moffat wanted X to drive the XC Falcon for the Ford dealer team. So X came down to Australia, and after getting a tour of the track, hopped behind the wheel of an XC Falcon in practice. He came back to the pits one lap later and said to Moffat, Alan, the car doesn't stop. Come race day, the pair had a solid lead over the team car in second place, but X's liberal use of the brake pedal saw Moffat run the final stint with effectively no brakes. With Colin Bond in the sister car catching up, the decision was made by the team for the cars to form up, creating quite possibly one of the most iconic images in Bathurst history. All because X couldn't manage the damn brakes. In 1979, Ix won the Reborn Can-Am Championship, taking five of the ten races, before his final two victories at Le Mans came alongside Derek Bell in 1981 and 82. In 81, the 936 they used had literally been taken out of a museum before being on the racetrack. Ix also found an interest in the Paris-Dakar Rally, competing from the 1981 edition. Over 10 years, X won 29 stages and took overall victory in 1983 at the seat of a Mercedes 280 GE. With the Group C era in full swing, X was one of the senior drivers in the Porsche stable as the 956 and 962C became the dominant force in sports cars, coaching the younger up-and-comers through the ranks. One of these young drivers was the Nürburgring Nordschleife lap record holder Stefan Beloff, who was on course to become one of the world's standout drivers. In the 1985 WSC race at Spa-Francorchamps, Beloff attempted to pass X around the outside of Eau Rouge. The pair made contact, spearing Beloff's 956 head-on into the barriers at Radion and spinning X up the hill. The accident was broadcast through X's onboard camera to live audiences, showing X extracting himself from the car and rushing to help Beloff from his burning machine. Unfortunately, Beloff died from his injuries. X retired from racing at the conclusion of the 1985 season with a final World Sports Car Championship secured for Porsche. When you look at the achievements of Jackie X, 
it is hard to believe that one man could have done so much. With six Le Mans victories, eight Formula One victories, winning the Spa 24 hour and Bathurst 1000 in touring car machinery, and a Paris Dakar rally, any one of these achievements could be counted as a successful career. And X has them all. But Jackie X is so much more than his racing achievements. It is his style, his swagger, his undeniable speed that has seen him become a legend of the sport. So much so that he stars in a Belgian comic book about motorsport. Because of course he does. Because he's the original Mr. Lamont.